Hello, John Reds here and welcome back. Big hello to all my subscribers and for those of you that have just found the channel, why not hit the little subscribe button now? In this video presentation, I thought we would kick off 2021 with a very popular topic, how to find the MB2. And this is a classic case. Here I'm going to root treat a maxillary first molar in which the dentist had had trouble locating the canals. I'll show you how I found the canals and I'll also show you how to go about looking for the MB2. Hope you enjoy it. Here you can see the preoptive radiograph of the maxillary left first molar. The general dentist had referred the case because they were unable to locate all the root canals. They are slightly sclerosed and there's a periopical radiolucency at the tip of the distobuccal root. The temporary restoration was simply removed with a long tapered diamond burr and the access cavity flushed with 3% sodium hypochlorite. Here you can see the view into the access cavity under high microscopic magnification. So when you're trying to locate the MB2, you really need to have some kind of reference point. If you can locate the orifices of the main MB canal and the palatal canal, draw a line between them, and then run a line perpendicular to the distobuccal, it's in the intersection of those two lines that you're likely to find the orifice of the MB2. As you'll see in this case, there's often a ledge of dentine covering it, and you'll need to remove this and then trough along any isthmus until you reach the point of the orifice. On the preoptive radiograph, you can see the periopical radiolucency at the tip of the distobuccal root. You can also see the dentine ledges that are covering the orifices of the buccal canals. These will need to be removed in order to gain access to the root canal. Back to the microscope view and you can see these two ledges that will need to be removed. Now to locate the root canals. If you imagine the MB canal, the palatal canal, the distobuccal canal, and a line between them. So there's a line between the MB1 and the palatal and a perpendicular line running through the distobuccal. The point of intersection is where you're likely to find the orifice of the MB2. In this case, I used the StarTex 3 ultrasonic tip and a large and small LN burr to remove the dentine ledges and trough along the isthmus from the MB1 until I located the orifice of the MB2. I haven't managed to find the MB2 yet, so I'm opening up the coronal aspect of the primary root canals, the MB1, distobuccal and palatal using a ProTaper SX instrument. Now I'm using the LN burr, and I'll use this in conjunction with the StarTex 3 tip, that's the ultrasonic tip, and copious irrigation with 3% sodium hypochlorite, working along the isthmus in small increments until I locate the orifice of the MB2.
Here I'm highlighting the isthmus with a DG16 endodontic probe. And finally, I've located the orifice of the MB2. I'm using a small LN burr this time to make a small divot in the orifice so that my rotary instrument will be guided into it. Coronal flaring again with the ProTaper SX. After rinsing the access cavity with 3% sodium hypochlorite, you can clearly see the orifices of the MB1 and MB2 that have been flared. I then continue preparation using the Wave 1 Gold system. Here you can see my diagnostic comb fit radiograph with good lengths in all canals. Here's the completed obturation which was carried out using a vertically compacted gutta percha technique. The MB1 and MB2 are clearly visible under high microscopic magnification. Here again is the preoperative radiograph with the dentine ledges over the orifices of the root canals and now the postoperative result showing a good coronal apical seal. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that presentation. Stay tuned because there are going to be many more interesting cases in the pipeline. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and above all, enjoy your endo.